Welcome to First Look Florida State Tennis. I'm your host Tom Block and coming up we'll introduce you to the men's and women's tennis teams here at Florida State as they get set to serve up the action in 2013. We'll sit down with both head coaches and you'll meet several of the stars on both the men's and women's side. It's all coming up so stay with us. We're just getting started here on First Look Florida State Tennis. Welcome back everybody. The 2013 season is here and with it comes high expectations and lofty goals for the women's tennis team at Florida State. The Seminoles enter the year ranked 38th nationally and one of their star seniors, the outspoken leader, is Amy Sargent who ranks 100th nationally among individuals in women's collegiate tennis. She sees nothing but success ahead this year for herself and her teammates. Um, it's my senior year first of all so I've got to go out with a big bang. And the fact that we have an amazing team, like everybody is really good this year and anybody can play anywhere. It is a tough league and I think ACC is like Duke and UNC, like they're the top two teams and you know it just makes you, you kind of have nothing to lose but also you just go out there and leave, every, leave everything out there and you know to play better teams it, it drives you, you want to go and beat these top teams and we've done it in the past and it, it feels great. You just go out there, have fun, work hard and hard, hard work pays off in the end, and we're a team that fights till the end. Fellow senior Francesca Segarelli is one of four Seminoles ranked in the top 100 as the year begins. She checks in at number 73, and she too thinks Florida State can grab that elusive ACC title that they were so close to capturing just a couple of years ago. Uh, we were so close, and uh, senior year, it's my dream. That's what I want to do with this team, and hopefully, it will happen. I will try my best to make it happen. It takes passion. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes not letting go. No matter what happens, keep fighting. And give not 100%, 110% every day. As competitive as they are on the court, this most international of teams is even more committed in the classroom. The lone American on this cosmopolitan squad is sophomore Layla Erkin. And even though she's one of the youngsters, if you will, in the squad, she's the top academician on a team that annually boasts the top cumulative team GPA of any FSU sports team. We're all driven and very ambitious. We have the same goals, which is very nice because we all work very hard and we all want the same things both in academics and in tennis. And that drive and ambition were on display this past fall as the Florida State women's team had a terrific start to the 2012-2013 campaign. Let's look back at that special fall season that served up the start of what should be a spectacular year. The Florida State women's tennis team looks forward to the kickoff of the NCAA season with anticipation at a fever pitch not seen in a long time. The confidence and enthusiasm are fueled by the most successful fall schedule in program history. I never felt this strong as a team and we went through the fall and it was unbelievable. We never had such a, a strong fall either and so many results and seeing not only in tournament, but also working out, also listening to comments. I've never heard it so close and so decided to do so well. So it obviously motivates me much more. From the team's strong showing at the opening tournament at Furman University to the State of Florida Championships at the University of South Florida, the Garnet and Gold Ladies blazed a historic path through the fall schedule. Amy Sargent highlighted the autumn campaign, reaching the finals at USF. I think the fall is very important because it, it gives you a taste of what college tennis is about, especially for the newcomers. And it's like, it's the hardest part because you're in season training, you're in post-season training, you're traveling on the road and, you know, just play back-to-back -back matches and with the heavy schedule like we had last semester. To go into the spring with, with the success we had, it's, it's exciting, you know, it's like a fire in the belly. And we all had, a, every one of us had a really good fall. Fitness-wise, match-wise, school-wise, everything was just like, boom. 
The fall saw a growth in the experience as well as the depth for the Garnet and Gold, with a quartet climbing up the national rankings. It was a season which has raised excitement and expectations among players and coaches alike. It's given, given everyone a lot more confidence especially and we have four people ranked in the top 100. I think we're probably coming off one of the best full semesters that we've had in four or five years I should think. Maybe one of the best we've ever had so um, you know and that was without Kerry Cartwright who's obviously won the Junior National College Championships last year so uh, you know I think adding her to the equation with the team that we've already assembled um, you know, I think it, you know, it sets us up very nice. We've got a lot of confidence going into the spring semester. And I'm joined now by FSU women's tennis coach Jennifer Hyde. And coach, as we just saw in that piece, uh, this team is not lacking for personality. I, I think Definitely that kind of goes not. with the sport of tennis in general, but you seem to have a pretty unique group. Yeah, we do. We have a very colorful group. We seem, we seem to have them every year. Um, we've got, you know, some that are a little more quiet, although they're not very quiet. And we've got the ones that just kind of demand and command attention. Um, and it, it certainly makes for a fun work day, that's for sure. One thing that stood out uh, in, in talking with the players is that even though there's different personalities, there's, there's one goal, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that obviously is to, is to get to the top of the ACC. And this is a team that has as good a depth as any squad that you've had, so you must be excited as you get started with the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think the fall is pretty indicative of, of how deep the squad is. I mean, it's probably the most success we've ever had or I've ever had as a coach uh, with regards to fall results. And um, yeah, we have so much to look forward to. It's just a matter now of just taking it a match at a time, a practice at a time, because we have a ton of work we need to do between now and May. But we definitely have that ACC title you know, on our radar. Our two seniors were within one point of winning that a couple years ago. So I know that they want to go out with that championship as well. And we have a long, long road ahead of us, but uh, we certainly have some goals set. Yeah, you were, you were that close. And I know, you know, in, in your prior days, you played here as well. I mean, you have the ultimate respect for how tough a conference the Atlantic Coast Conference is. To be that close a couple years ago, to have a team that maybe could, could, could get it done. I mean, what would the significance be for Florida State to get there? Yeah, I mean, our conference is one of the best in the nation with regards to tennis. And, and Florida State, I think, only twice has even made the finals. It was my senior year in, in 94 and then two years ago. And uh, winning a conference title for us is, is almost as significant as winning a national title because the competition every single round is just so deep. It's, you know, we're playing top 10 people every match starting the first round. Um, to win that would be significant. That would be, um, that would be monumental. That would be, that's our goal. That's what these seniors are looking for, uh, that they're looking toward that. Um, and I think if, if we've ever had a squad that can make a run again, it's a squad. Yeah. You talk about all the work that has to be done between now and May. I'm, I'm sure you have pages you could detail, but I mean, can you narrow it down to, I mean, wh where do you want to see the most improvement or where does this team need to improve as you go into the season? Well, I think one thing that helped us a lot was our postseason training program in November, December. Um, these guys got in unbelievably good shape and I think we need to be able to maintain that fitness through the spring and it's hard to get more fit during the spring because you're competing so often. Um, so I think that that's one thing that's going to maybe set us apart from some of the other teams we're going to see. Um, I also think uh, individual time, one-on-one -on -one time on court with them, working on specific things so they're just used to doing things over and over again, muscle memory, maybe little things we have to tweak in some of their individual games I think is really important. And then lastly is just bringing the team together and making sure this team gels. Um, I think that was one of the strengths we've always had in the program is this, this team plays for each other. And I think if we can work on all those things, it can be a pretty exciting season. Can you give us a little thumbnail? I mean, the program has, on each of these individuals, four players in the top 100 right now, which speaks to the depth that we already discussed a little bit. But can you give us a little snapshot on each of those players that are ranked so highly? Yeah, I mean, and we could have more people. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with having four in the top 100. I think that speaks volumes. Um, Danica Borthwick came in here uh, as a redshirt freshman and, and just absolutely tore it up in the fall. I mean, she made the regional semifinal. She had six or seven ranked wins. Um, worked herself in the top 30 or 40 in the country in just one semester. Uh, her future is very bright, and I think she's on a mission not only to help this team reach great things, but she individually also aspires to do great things. Um, Mia Vrians uh, started a little late on her freshman campaign last year, and this year is just, again, ranked wins, coming out, came back fit, you know, dropped some weight during the summer is one of the fastest players we have on the team and she's focused and, and I think very green now. Um, who else we have? Francesca, our two seniors are the last two ranked. Uh, worked really hard during the summer. Uh, Fran is ready to go. She's on a mission this semester as is you know her, her sis, uh, Amy Sargent, who is, this is her first complete fall that Amy's played since she's been here. And because uh, she's had some hip issues, but she's sorted all those out. So to kind of have those, those are our top four, but we have two or three other people that could be in our top four. 
anywhere as well. So we don't know what's going to happen. Um, anyone could play anywhere this year, and it, that makes for a lot of difficult decisions on our part, but it's a good problem to have. I shouldn't have saved this question for last because clearly it's not last in your priorities, but your team annually wins the Golden Torch Award mm -hmm. for academic success. Yes. Uh, maybe not why such an emphasis, but talk about your emphasis on academics because clearly it shows with every other one of the players on your team. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, last semester at the beginning of the fall and, and a couple weeks into the fall, a lot of our girls were discussing how stressed out they were about school and they were really concerned about dropping that, you know, their grade point averages from last semester. And that somehow at the end of the semester, we ended up, I think, getting a 3.5, team GPA, which when a couple of them were really concerned and if that's what they do when they're concerned, you know, I mean, that, that just shows the effort that they put toward it. And they know it's a very, they know we have our big dinner in October and they don't want me sitting at that dinner and not getting the award every year for our team. I think they do take a lot of pride in that. And uh, I'm just really impressed with the efforts that they make with that side of their responsibility. They just year in and year they continue to work so hard with it. And, and it's important in the recruiting process, we stress that to them as well. So uh, they know that that's kind of what we expect. but. You know, you have expectations, and, and meeting them sometimes doesn't always work. But so far, they've done such an awesome job with it. Well, congratulations on that success in the classroom. Thank you. And on the court, six straight years into the postseason. This will be uh, year number seven. Should be a fun year to watch. So best of luck to you Thank and your you. team. Thanks, Tom. All right, Coach Jennifer Hyde, the women's coach here at Florida State. Stay with us. We'll take a break and come back and turn our attention to the men's tennis team here at FSU. We're coming right back. That'll do it for First Look Florida State Tennis. Thanks so much for joining us, and I hope you've enjoyed our special look at the men's and women's tennis programs here at Florida State, two highly successful teams that are part of a highly successful athletic department at FSU. We wish both the men and women the best of luck this year in the ACC tournament and also in NCAA postseason competition. Remember, you can follow the Florida State tennis teams and all Florida State athletic teams year-round by logging on to Seminoles.com. Again, thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time right here.